What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we're jumping in with some brand new Destiny 2 news, and Bungie talk about some Season of the Chosen stuff in this final update before Season 13 kicks off. And of course it is time for this week at Bungie, so they jump in and they speak about some of the new weapons we're going to be getting in Vanguard Strikes, Destiny 1 reprise weapons, but also the new Pursuit weapon for Season 13, and we're going to be getting a breech-loaded grenade launcher, and then they reveal some new weapons for Trials of Osiris, as well as a better look at the armor and some cosmetic drops we'll be able to pick up. They also speak about a buff to the Aeon suite of exotics that we've got in the game, and they've got some other maintenance timeline info for the update that'll be launching at the start of Season of the Chosen next Tuesday. So, we're going to break it all down in the video, guys. I hope you enjoy this one, as always. But now, let's get into it. And initially, they point out the fact that we've had the reveal for the new season this week, but also the season roadmap. So, of course, as always, if you want to catch up on any of that stuff, I'll link my previous videos, as well as this week at Bungie, down below. But here they say that Season of the Chosen is delivering some shiny new things for you to collect. We already spilled the beans for the first time that some of your favourite weapons from Destiny 1 are showing up in Destiny 2 as rewards for completing Nightfall or deals, and that includes the Swarm, Palindrome, and Shadow Price. And we get a nice look at the new high-res models for those weapons for Destiny 2. They say that Nightfall the Ordeal weapons have a chance to drop at the end of the activity, depending on your medal, whether it's Platinum, Gold, etc. And difficulty. Master difficulty will give you the highest chance at the drop of the base version of the weapons. But then Adept difficulty weapons have a chance to drop at the end of a Grandmaster Nightfall when they go live later in the season. Drop chance also is dependent on your medal. Slay enough champions to hit Platinum and you'll have a high chance at an Adept weapon. So it's going to be pretty basic in terms of the rollout for those weapons, the standard versions dropping in ordeals, and of course adept versions coming a little bit later on in the season when the Grandmasters go live. But at least that's another layer of pursuit to strikes in general in the game. But in terms of pursuit, they do say that similar to Season of the Hunt, we'll have a new pursuit weapon for you to earn from your quest of choice. Choose between Strikes, Crucible, or Gambit to earn the new breech-loaded grenade launcher, the Salvager's Salvo. Of course, as Bungie outlined the other week, they are adjusting how these are going to work in the game, and the projectiles will now detonate on impact with the character, even if you're holding the trigger. We can see what the model for the weapon looks like, and they say as always that there will be additional skins to pursue by the season-specific quests, but they also point out that we may have seen some teases for new rewards for Trials of Osiris. Some of them were spotted in the trailer, and they say we also have three new Trials weapons. One of them shares a very similar model to the Messenger from back in Destiny 1, the Pulse Rifle at the top, but also we can see we got the Trials Hand Cannon, as well as a Trial Sword, which is going to be pretty awesome to collect in the game, so give us your thoughts about those. But also right here, a better look at some of the armor we'll be picking up. Personally pretty excited for the Trials armor right there. Let us know what you think, and also on the subject of cosmetics, we'll be getting a Ghost Ship and Sparrow. But they say for the first week of Trials, armor and Adept mods will be in the Flawless Chest, and the second week is when we'll have the first chance to grab an Adept weapon. But along with the new weapons and armor, we got the cosmetic rewards, so the Ghost Shell drop chance increases as you win matches and increases when you hit 3, 5 and 7 wins, as well as flawless milestones each week. But the Ship and Sparrow drop chances increase every time you go flawless, so initially the Ghost Shell right there does look very, very cool. The Sparrow is pretty neat as well, but especially I think the Ship is pretty awesome. Purely in terms of the cosmetics, I do think those are some of the cooler rewards that Bungie have made. But in this section, they finish by saying, wait, there's more. Season of the Chosen has several new additions to your arsenal ready for the take-in. And we can see some of these season-specific weapons right there. Obviously, we've got to see what the archetypes are going to be like, what the roles will be like. But in terms of weapon introductions, let's say for a season of content, there does appear to be some fairly exciting stuff. So give us your thoughts in the comment section. Here, though, they speak about the Cult of Aeon. And they say in redesigning the Aeon Cult exotic armor pieces, because yes, they're finally going to do it, we wanted to lean hard into the idea that these are exotics that you and your fire team wear when you really want to work together as a team. And so instead of having a single monolithic exotic perk to handle this, we opted to take a page out of the Armor 2.0 book and give the Aeon Cold exotics their own unique mod socket and mods, which are all unlocked as soon as you acquire the exotic, and each of which is tied to one of the different Aeon Cult roles. These mods are identical across the exotics for all three classes, so you can choose any role regardless of what class or subclass you're playing on. So there is Sect of Force, you specialize in punishing powerful combatants before they can harm your allies. Rapid precision hits with a weapon temporarily increase your reload speed and weapon swap speed. But when you stun a champion or defeat a boss or miniboss, your nearby fire team members will gain a burst of grenade and melee energy. Aeon Cult allies who do not have the Sector Force role equipped also gain a burst of super energy. 
But there's also Sect of Insight. You specialize in empowering your allies and keeping them well supplied. Successive precision weapon takedowns have a chance to drop an orb of power for your allies. And when you use a finisher on an elite, you generate special ammo for your fire team. When you use a finisher on a boss or mini boss, you generate heavy ammo for your fire team. And nearby Aeon Cult allies who do not have the Sect of Insight role equipped also gain a bonus to weapon damage for a short time. And then there is Sect of Vigor. You specialize in keeping your allies in the fight. Gain class ability energy as your allies die. Gain full class ability energy when you resurrect an ally. And when you cast your super, nearby allies gain an instant burst of healing. Aeon Cult allies who do not have the Sect of Vigor role equipped also gain an overshield. So from those selectable bonuses, obviously it's a pretty significant buff for those exotic pieces. And Bungie say that each of the mods has one perk focusing on the user and one perk that grants benefits to the allies. Additionally, the second perk includes an extra benefit for anyone in your fire team that has not chosen the same role. So for maximum efficiency, each member of the three player fire team should choose a different mod to reap the most benefits. Actually, I'd say that is a pretty exciting buff for those exotic armor pieces. A little bit more than what I was expecting, so give us your thoughts on that as well. Could be pretty powerful in some of the endgame content we're going to see. But also Bungie say on the subject of exotic catalysts, that catalysts for the following weapons have had their drop sources and objectives updated to not be associated with vaulted content. So Bad Juju, Izanagi's Burden, Sleeper, Huckleberry, Worldline Zero, Polaris Lance, Telesto, Legend of Acrius, and Skyburner's Oath. And then the catalysts for Whisper and Outbreak Perfected are still unobtainable for anyone who hasn't already earned them and will be added in a future update. So those catalysts will once again be obtainable in the game. That's a big positive and in terms of the update, next Tuesday, February 9th, maintenance for the update will begin at 8am PST, but 8.45am, which is 445 in the UK, is when players will be removed from activities. And at 9 a.m. Pacific, which is 5 p.m. UTC, the update will become available across all platforms. And players should be able to log back into Destiny 2 when Season of the Chosen will begin. So bear that in mind, and if you want to double check on any of those details, the TWAB will be linked in the description box below. Now though, getting into some other updates about the game, Joe Blackburn tweeted and said, We get this question a lot, I've checked with the team, and Eyes of Tomorrow does have a cumulative drop chance. And that means that each week you beat Tanex on your account, the chance of you getting those sweet homing rockets goes up, eventually all the way to 100% if you are super unlucky. And there have been some discussion about it, as we get closer to the end of the season, folks who haven't picked it up yet have been wondering about those drop chances as well as players in general, so... Not sure if those are similar numbers to what we saw for things like Anarchy before, but apparently there is bad luck protection, essentially, when it comes to getting Eyes of Tomorrow. Give us your thoughts and experiences with that in the comment section. However, players also pointed out that the Nectar Dynamo and Rustbury shaders were never actually offered in the Eververse store this season. Obviously things that have been spotted in the database, and Cosmo said, We appreciate you reporting the issue, and we'll make sure these missing shaders are made available in a future season. So apparently they will stay in the game, and will be issued in a different season, potentially some good start dropping as of next week. And finally right here, Bungie, I've been posting a couple of lore bits to the blog, and as we get close to the end of the season right here, they've posted one called One Exile to Another, with a brief tale of the crow and his ghost Glint hanging out in the European dead zone. And it ends with, as the crow followed the warlock's footsteps, he once again imagined the crush of the last city. He could feel the weight of humanity pressing in around him, the mass of flesh and accusing eyes, the looming walls closing in. Crow's rumination was broken as they stepped from the trees into a clearing with a beat up jump ship. And Osiris paused at the foot of the loading ramp and turned to face Crow. There will come a time when your identity, your past, can no longer stay hidden. Crow felt a tightness in his chest as he imagined the whole city, all of humanity, staring at him. But Osiris says, and when that time comes, remember this moment, one exile to another, you can trust me. And they clasped hands for a fleeting moment. Crow wondered if he might find acceptance after all. And so essentially, Crow is coming back to the last city with Osiris. This will very much be linked with the future story for Crow, and the fact that we can see Crow with Zavala in one of the cutscenes for the upcoming content, in one of the cutscenes for the upcoming season. And essentially it is Osiris that finally encourages Crow back to the last city, according to this lore, which is pretty cool. So I'll also link the new lore post down in the description box below. But for today, guys, that's everything we have to speak about in this video. So give us your thoughts as always in the comment section. But if you've enjoyed it, a rating below very much helps us out. And also feel free to get subscribed to the channel. We're going to have plenty of new content to discuss over the next week or so. And I'll be sure to keep you posted. But for now, thanks as always for tuning in. And I hope you have an awesome day.